Hey guys, welcome back to Suburban Ranch. Today, we're gonna to be finishing up the front end rebuild of our 1990 GMC Sierra 1500 with a new set of brakes. We've got our new rotors here. The first step is to wipe down the rotor surface with a little bit of brake cleaner. So I'll spray some on a rag here and just wipe down this surface. And you have to do this because sometimes these are shipped with a little bit of a oil residue on them to keep them from rusting. So you just want to get all of that off. So you can see on the rag, there's a little bit of residue coming off. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing. There we go. So the next step is to put a little bit of brake parts lube just on the front face of the hub here and that'll keep the rotor from freezing onto the hub. And we don't need a lot, we'll just kind of coat it here, especially right in this crease. Get a little bit in there. And I think you could use anti-seize for this as well, depending on what you have. And that should do the trick. Next up, we'll slide our rotor into place. Now, I know it looks like the veins are going backwards, but this is actually the right side rotor, and this is the way it's supposed to go. So we've got a uh, freshly rebuilt caliper here that we're gonna be installing, and a new set of pads. So before we put the pads in, we wanna put just a little bit of this lube on the back of the pad where it contacts the caliper. Get a little bit of lube on it there. We gotta get a little bit of lube on these um, tangs that stick out as well, where they ride on the caliper. There we go. And this will snap into place. There we go. And then our outer pad, kind of the same deal here. So we'll get a little bit of lube in to that backing plate where it's gonna rub into the caliper. And there's a squealer here, so that's what contacts the rotor and makes it squeal once the pads get worn down. And this just snaps into place. So there's two um, kind of spring, there's a spring-loaded clip here and this goes into the holes on the caliper, so that's what holds it in place. Now we've got our inner and outer pad installed. We've got the rotor on the truck. We've got the caliper loaded. It's time to get the caliper on the truck. So the caliper's held onto the truck with these two bolts. Because I have a new caliper, these bolts and slides are already greased. But if you're reusing your old caliper, you'll want to apply a little bit of that lubricant on these bolts here so that they slide in and out uh, nice and smoothly. So we'll go ahead and get this onto the truck. All right, we've got the caliper bolted on. We'll uh, get our torque wrench out and get it torqued to spec next. Here's a look at that back side of that caliper, and we can see the lower and upper mounting bolts. The torque spec for the 88 to 92 trucks is 28 foot pounds. And there we go. Next up, we're gonna install a new set of brake hoses. So I've got the mount uh, that holds the brake hose in place on the frame. You'll notice on your new brake hoses and your old ones that they are keyed to go through this mount. So we can see that the mount has uh, a couple of different cutouts on it. So we we'll wanna make sure that we get the brake hose installed and get those keys in place so that it sits flush on this side. 
Once those are installed, there is a little spring clip that holds it all together. So we'll get that started. We got it most of the way on. Everything's still sitting nice and flush on this side. And I'll just use a little rubber mallet to finish it off here. So we can see now that the spring clip is down over the end of the brake hose. Everything is firmly attached and it's ready to go back in the truck. We've got the hard line on the truck up here. We'll go ahead and thread that into our new brake hose. Okay, we've got it started pretty well. And then this bracket has a, a little tang that sticks down through that upper control arm mount right there. And it's held in position with one bolt. So we've got that bolt started. It's a half inch bolt. I'm gonna use one of these ratcheting wrenches to spin it in place. There we go. Next up, we'll tighten the hard line into the brake hose. So I'll use uh, a wrench on the back side here and hold the front as well. So I'll just tighten up that brake line and then we'll be ready to attach it to our caliper. So we've got a 9 16 flare nut wrench for the brake line itself. And then we'll hold the brake hose here with just an end wrench. Right, there we go. Last but not least, we need to connect our brake hose to the brake caliper. So we'll start by pulling out a little plastic plug. And we've got our banjo bolt and we've got a copper washer on the outside. Then we'll run it through the brake hose and a copper washer on the inside. And then we'll thread it into the brake caliper. And we'll snug up the banjo bolt and we should be good to go. All right guys, so we're gonna put the finishing touches on this front brake job with a new inner fender splash shield. So we actually got these from the guys over at Rubber the Right Way. Um, they make kits for all of the trucks of this generation. Now do be careful when you're ordering them. They make different kits for two wheel drive and four wheel drive, as well as light duty and heavy duty trucks. So these install with just some push pins. Pretty straightforward. We'll just line it up with the existing holes. Probably it goes behind these control arm mounts. Something like that. And that'll keep all of the grime and dirt from getting up into your engine bay. Um, and we'll link these parts below as well. And I almost forgot here on the passenger side of the truck, there's actually one extra piece that comes with the kit. An extra little splash shield here. This covers up the front of the uh, fender liner here. There we go, that's all there is to it. All right guys, the only thing left to do here is to bleed the brakes. We've got another video where we show you how to bleed brakes. We'll link that below. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe.